Let's talk about satellites now. We've got a great guest. Uh, our good friend uh, Peter Vogel is in studio with us. And uh, he is a technology expert and writer and physics teacher here in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on air. I wanted to talk about uh, Starlink or Project Starlink. And, you know, some people know about this, uh, but this is a- another one of Elon Musk's uh, projects. You know him from Tesla and Solar City and SpaceX. And uh, now he is launching satellites uh, into uh, Earth orbit. Uh, tell our listeners... Why? Why is he getting into the satellite game? So it's a, it's a multi-pronged vision that uh, Elon Musk has, uh, ultimately ending with him putting a constellation of satellites around Mars. He hopes to get to Mars before he dies. Yes. <laughs> that uh, may uh, be difficult to, to pull off. In any case, Starlink is his uh, plan to deliver uh, internet across the Earth, cheaply, low latency, Uh, through a network of thousands of satellites, small satellites, about a quarter ton each, uh, low Earth orbit, 500 to 1,500 kilometers. And he's already put 300 in orbit. There's 300 satellites up there already. He launches 60 at a time. Okay. Uh, They have a factory in Renton uh, in Washington State. They crank out six a day. Uh, They have a stockpile of several hundred. And how many satellites does he need to get up there to make this viable? Uh, he says he can uh, run uh, his initial uh, tests at around 1,000 satellites, and he'll be doing that later this year, Canada and uh, the United States, northern Canada, actually. Um, and Musk, of course, has ties to Canada. His very first job was in Vancouver working in a lumber mill, so he has strong affinity here. Um, he has permits for, I believe, 4,000 satellites. He has applied for 12, and he needs 42,000 eventually. Baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps, yes. Internet by satellite is not new. It is not new. Uh, however, it has been an area fraught with bankruptcies, uh, failures. It's a difficult thing to do. No one has been able to pull off low latency, large networks. Uh, we, we've had Iridium satellites that went bankrupt virtually at They large. were like satellite phone service. Satellite phone service. Why did they fail in your opinion? Uh, I, I don't think they could get the customers. The radios were expensive. The plans were expensive. Uh, the plan, yeah, the, the whole thing was expensive. There were, the network was 77 satellites or so, not enough for continuous uh, communication. You, you needed something uh, lower and, and, and so forth. And, and Iridium had controversy uh, as well with uh, light reflecting uh, brightly off its uh, antennas. And so that's something we want to talk about as well. Uh, I guess astronomers here on Earth are concerned that uh, these satellites are reflecting too much light back to Earth and blocking their efforts to see out into the cosmos. The, the, the problem is, is multi-pronged uh, again. Yes, the astronomers are upset, particularly if there are thousands of these. They, they think that any, at any given time, there'll be a thousand in their field of view uh, on these wide view uh, telescopes. And they've printed photos showing uh, a network of these satellites obscuring a, a large sky photo in South America. Whether Whether or not uh, that can be mitigated remains to be seen. Musk says he's confident he can control the problem. Um, He's done things such as painting satellites black. Hmm, That's a problem because black uh, causes heat uh, issues in space. The the craft overheats. It's it's, it's traditionally not done. (laughs) So it hasn't been thought through fully. And this is the argument from the International Astronomers Union. It needs to be thought through before he proceeds with the next thousand or more of these uh, launches. But he had to get permission from somewhere. Like, who's giving him the permission to to launch these things? Ultimately, the permission comes strangely from uh, the um, FAA, I believe, in America. Uh, So flight uh, and so forth. And I think there's an FCC communications uh, uh, approval. But no one had actually thought through the uh, business of um, uh, astronomy problems. Really, it was given no thought. So these satellites, um, I guess the first batch, they were reflecting. Yes, in fact, quite, I, quite I a saw lot. them myself. Yeah, I remember reading on Facebook you were saying you saw them. It was it was spectacular. Uh, if I had not known, I would have said we were under invasion. <laughs> uh, and, and I saw them at midnight uh, in an industrial park. I knew they would be crossing. I pulled over under a streetlight and was able to see these things, and it was stunning to me. Even under a streetlight? 
even under a street light. Oh, wow. That now, th- this, this was a day from launch. Yeah. Th- these things uh, have to move up into launch uh, or into um, final position. Antennas are tweaked and all this kind of stuff that, that ultimately changes that visibility. Yeah. So a day later, you couldn't see them. What type of material is causing that much reflection? It, it's, it's the antennas on them and their physical size. Yeah. They're, they're not small. They're a quarter ton each. Some people think they're shoebox size. No, they're not. They're, they're large. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the physical uh, components, the solar panels on them, uh, cause reflection. Yeah. Now, this, this problem goes way back to 1960 when the Americans launched Echo 1, which my, my father took me out to see this. I vividly remember it. And it uh, sent me on a lifelong fascination with space. And in fact, here in the studio, I have a piece of, of mylar from uh, the original um, echo balloons, as they were called. And this was given to me by a, a NASA fellow. I'm, I'm showing this here in the studio. Ultra, ultra thin material. Oh, and wow. it was a 100 yeah. foot balloon. It's like thin tinfoil. Like thin tinfoil. But yeah. at that time, unknown. It, it required new physics to deposit uh, aluminum onto what became called mylar. Yeah. The, the name became the Is that the like a plastic? Or? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So this was a 100-foot balloon. They then developed a 135-foot balloon, and uh, this was visible over the entire Earth. It was the very first man-made object visible from space. Yeah. So, Is it, it re- still up there? No. 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 The, it, it and its sister uh, came down late in the 60s, but... And, and here's a, an interesting point, uh, a corollary to the experiments with um, ECHO, they were using it to bounce microwave off, so it wasn't an active satellite. Uh, the, the, the antenna that they developed later led to the Nobel Prize in Physics for discovering the cosmic microwave background, which was oh, the wow. evidence for okay. the, the Big Bang. Yeah. So this is this interplay. Astronomers say, from this we're plastic. important to physics. <laughs> uh, Elon, you need to respect the work that we do. Uh, without our work, you wouldn't, wouldn't have your satellites in orbit. Yeah. So he's launching all of these things up there. Do you think there is a solution to have them not reflect so much light? I mean, if he's going to get 40,000 of them up there, and he's not the only guy. There's competitors out there as well. That's right. There are three main companies. Uh, I think he uh, has has the the greatest number uh, in in plans. It's difficult to say. He's confident that he can uh, can pull it off. Uh, He's known for bravado and... uh, Certainly, we can't uh, fault him for uh, innovation uh, in many, many spheres. So I think we'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Um, the, 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 the low albedo new black ones that he's uh, launched are, are just recently. He's launching another compliment, I think, Saturday, uh, so, so this week uh, as we speak. Um, he's working on it. It's, it's a work in progress, shall we say. Do they have, like, some sort of space traffic control up there? Like, when you've they, got, like, tens of thousands of these they, things. They, they do. Uh, they do. And, and this, there's some maneuverability to these. And so he has talked about maneuvering them out of critical uh, astronomical experiments. He's also talked about the astronomers using data processing to track these things. After all, if a Raspberry Pi can track 100 aircraft, presumably a supercomputer can track 42,000 satellites with relatively little problem. But there's overhead, there's cost involved, there's time, there's effort, there's money. There are people that have to be employed to, to do this data processing and filter out this material. But he's hoping to make a lot of money out of this. He hopes to make $30 billion a year. $30 billion a year profit? And he intends to plow that all back into SpaceX, the vision being to get SpaceX to Mars. And he already has plans to put Starlink in orbit around Mars to develop an internet at Mars, shall we say. Uh, that, that's his long-term vision. How much do you think it'll cost to get John to Mars? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's based on the pound. <laughs> it's a little bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> we better cut down on the beer. We better. I, I, I think. Um, I'm interested to see how well the, this uh, satellite uh, internet service will work because I, I remember back in the 90s, uh, my former business partner lived out in Abbotsford and that's all he could get was satellite internet. And sure. it, I mean, great, he got internet, but it sucked <laughs> really right. badly. Right, and so, so Musk believes he can get low latency, 20 uh, uh, millisecond. And what are we used to here? 10, 10 to 20 yeah. is, is, is not unusual. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so he believes he can do that, and he believes he can do, do it at gigabit speeds. 
Now, the aircraft uh, people are after him because if he can do it to Earth, he can also deliver it to aircraft. And oh. Internet to aircraft is, is really a problem at this point. Yeah. So if you can get a, mega, a, a gigabit feed into a plane, you've got the potential to have all the passengers watching Netflix simultaneously. You only need five megabits or so. Yeah. So th apparently that is another area where he intends to make a, a large amount of money. So people like so the satellite internet service will get right into the plane. Exactly. They don't have to have any equipment on there. It, it, it'll be a dedicated antenna. Is all it will be. Yeah. Just just as on Earth, he, he already claims he has his antennas ready. He says they're basically a pizza plate sized antenna. He says it comes with two instructions: plug in, aim at sky. It takes care this of the This will rest. disrupt the whole uh, airplane internet business. It will disrupt that business, but um, better, it will bring internet to areas of the world that traditionally don't have it. Do you have any insight as to what this would cost? I have nothing along those lines. Yeah. At the consumer end, I presume right. you're asking. Right, yeah, yeah. And I don't think they've unveiled anything like that, but presumably if they're going to roll that out in northern Canada, we're not talking hundreds of dollars a month. It no. It just won't be viable. No. Uh, we, we really don't know. Yeah, But yeah. presumably that's part of their, their next phase. We, we believe they're running tests in Canada uh, later in 2020. Well, it's kind of exciting. So, um, what's what's the overall rollout plan like? When when did he say that this will all be kind of actually up and running? Uh, I don't think there's a defined date. Each launch that they've had so far of the four, there's been some delay. Uh, so they're averaging around 1.3 satellites a month, yeah. uh, launches a month okay. of 60 satellites each. They need to get this down to the one every two or three days. Yeah. So we've got a way to go. I think we're looking at half a dozen years. Well, exciting uh, times. We're talking with Peter Vogel. He is a tech writer. Physics teacher, tech expert uh, out of Vancouver here, and uh, all about the Project Starlink uh, from Elon Musk launching tens of thousands of satellites uh, into low uh, Earth orbit to provide internet access to uh, the planet, and especially in remote areas, essentially. Yep. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much.